In this video, I'm going to show you how Cubase can help you take control of your virtual instrument speech band function using some simple MIDI editing techniques. Join me, won't you? Hi, my name is Didier, and today I wanted to walk you through some of the issues that I faced while uh, composing this track, specifically when it comes to bending notes on a virtual instrument, uh, much like you would on, on a guitar string. So first we're going to listen to this track without the uh, pitch bend, uh, and then we'll start playing around with that stuff, okay? Here we go. So the area of interest here is right at this measure. Those two notes are rather disconnected to me. You know, we're going from C sharp to A, playing legato, two different notes. Uh, but my goal is to play just one note and then bend into uh, a second one. So how do you do that? Uh, with your MIDI controller, you have your modulation wheel over here that allows you to control different parameters. In this case, I'm going to go uh, up and down uh, using the, uh, the bend function. Hit my C-sharp and then bend. That's not the note I want though, I want this one. The uh, controller is not going far enough. And that is one of the issues that uh, <laughs> I was trying to fix. And it's actually a very simple, very simple way to do that. So what you need to do is open up the, the uh, instrument that you're using on you know, the VST uh, panel. In my case, I have an instrument from uh, IK Multimedia called Syntronic and this is patched from them. The area you want to look at is the one called Bend. Now different VSTs will have different layouts, you know, different graphic interfaces. You'll have to look for uh, the, the, this uh, function in the instrument you're using. Uh, but the most important thing you need to look for is what is the band controller set to. In this case, it's set to two. And what this means is that it will bend two semitones or two half notes, right? So if I'm hitting my, my C sharp and, and bending to the maximal value, I'm going down two semitones. That's the note I'm hearing. I'm hearing a, I'm hearing a B. Then I need to go all the way down to A. So how many more steps is this? Well, we just count on our keyboard. C sharp, so C would be one, B would be two, uh, B flat or A sharp would be three, and then finally to line on A would be four, right? So to bend as far as I need to go, I need to send my bend function here to four. So that's step one. All right, now that you've set your bend value, let's um, test uh, the setup real quick. Now we know we're bending to the right note, so that's awesome. The next step then would be to um, record the performance again. Uh, <laughs> to make things a little faster, I've actually done that already. Uh, this way I'm going to spare you my really terrible playing. So let's uh, activate that version. We have a new MIDI, MIDI track here. Let's, let's listen to it. So let's take a look at uh, what that looks like in the editor. Okay. So earlier, remember, we had two notes, two uh, MIDI data, so C sharp to A3, but now we only have one note that bends, and this is what the curve looks like. Okay. To get to this panel, uh, if you don't have that activated in Cubase, you can uh, just click on this area here and then show whatever controller you want to um, you want to look at. So in our case, we're looking at the pitch bend. But you saw we have also velocity. You can edit how hard you know, the, the notes are hit, after touch, modulation, all those different things. But let's concentrate on pitch bend. The uh, first time that I opened up the uh, pitch bend uh, controller, 
I was a bit confused at what, how to read it. Um, you know, I'm used to thinking of the relationship between notes as being you know, half steps, semitones, those kind of things, and you know, more of a, of a musical relationship. Uh, but when you look at those numbers, they don't really relate to anything uh, that I can identify. You know, if I select one of those dots here, I get those values minus 6,195. In relation to what? I have no idea what that scale means. So, of course, I could take a look at the owner's manual and find out what uh, the geniuses at Steinberg, you know, uh, used to to um, uh, scale this, this controller. But uh, there's actually a much simpler way that I stumbled across by doing a little exploration on the interface. If you look at this little cog here called Setup Grid and click on it, you get this window that allows you to set up your grid to semitones. See, when I click on it, you get this little grid and each of these lines will correspond to a semitone up or down. So one, two, three, four. Uh, I found that with a little experimentation, I found that it's um, uh, easier for me anyway to set up this grid to the same values that your VST is using. Uh, this way the scale is one to one. You know, when you, you know that you're bending minus four uh, from your VST and then you see that that last value here, maximum minus four. There's a one-to-one -one relationship. If you change that to something else, it will not change the, the note that your um, VST is playing. It'll still bend the, the proper value, right? Because that, that, that note is independent from the, the, the Cubase um, scaling, so to speak, that's set on your VST. Uh, but what you're changing here is the resolution of your grid, okay? And uh, just to make things simpler when you're editing, you now next time you open this this, pro this project, maybe next year, you might not know, you might not remember all the steps you went through, you know, unless you keep uh, very nicely detailed notes. But uh, you know, you, you might take a look at this and see minus two. Why is it minus two? I'm bending four four semitone. Why is this set to two? So you, know, you don't want you want to avoid all that confusion. So I find to keep it simple, set it the same way. All right, we are almost done. And if you're still around, well, thank you so much for uh, sticking with me. Uh, technically, we could stop right here. You know, we've already uh, recorded the performance with the pitch band, everything is working, but there's an extra step you can, um, you can go for if you want to simplify your, your editing. And that's to clean up the automation curve over here. Okay, so I'm gonna sh show you how to do this. Uh, very, it's very simple in Cubase. I don't know how other DAWs uh, handle this particular uh, technique here. If you're using you know, Ableton or Pro Tools, you know, I'll be curious to, to know how, how that's done on another DAW. So please let me know in the comments if you have um, a favorite way of, uh, of doing so. But in Cubase, it's, it's really simple. So um, first, I'm gonna start by deleting all those notes in between. So now I just have the, the beginning data, so zero, and then the maximum one, minus four, right? And between those two points, you see that I have this uh, little handle here. And that is kind of like a Bezier handle. Right? It allows me to create the curve that I want and to smooth out the, um, the animation. Okay, everything is working, that's awesome. Uh, another advantage of uh, cleaning up your animation curve is that uh, it becomes a lot easier to edit because right now you know, we're, we're bending pretty quickly, but let's say you want to make your bend a lot longer, right? So now all you have to do is grab the beginning value, move it to where you want to start the bend, grab the ending value, move it to where you want, you want to end it, and then now you don't have to move a bunch of uh, dots that were there before, right? All you have to worry about now is uh, how steep you want your curve to be. And this is what happens. Not necessarily the effect we want in this case, but you get the idea, right? A lot easier to handle. So again, I'm gonna step back. And the final check is to ensure that uh, you reset your pitch value uh, controller so that uh, the ending note you know, plays at the proper pitch. 
So make sure that this value here is back to zero, right? Because otherwise, let's imagine that uh, you, know, you, you are a little sloppy in your performance or you're editing and this ends up somewhere in no man's land, you would end up with something like this. Not pretty, not pretty. So in other words, just make sure that your end value is where it needs to be. And now you're back to greatness. <laughs> All right, this is it for uh, today's video. Thank you so much for uh, sticking with me and watching until the end. Uh, please let me know in the comments if uh, you found this information useful or like and subscribe, all the usual, all the usual YouTube um, stuff. Uh, but please also let me know if um, other DAWs have something similar. Maybe if, maybe if it's easier to do in, uh, in another software or maybe if you yourself have a different way of handling those controllers in Cubase itself. Uh, it's always good to uh, share information, by the way. Uh, thanks again and happy composing. Until next time.